One of the important theories of working with cash visible edges or uh, dynamic views is the hierarchy of where we control our settings. Starting at the top in this slide, the cache visible edge settings is the ultimate override for any symbology settings within our drawings. Right down to the very bottom, which is the standard level symbology settings that come with our, our levels, anywhere in between, we can adjust the appearance of our drawings. Or, better put, certain aspects of it. So, if you want to override a reference file, and it's display, you know, you may look at display styles, but if you want to get down to the granular level of looking at uh, individual objects and the levels they sit on and override those, you could look at level overrides right down to part and family. So that's an important theory to understand the granularity of being alter the appearance of our drawings from a complete override of everything down to the granular individual elements re -symbolization. So one thing we should look more at is display styles and ultimately display rules. Display rules being a very powerful feature of altering the appearance of not only overall drawing settings but down to individual elements based on their criteria or property. Within the display style setting box we have display rules and within display rules we can create book rules based on a certain criteria. So let's have a look at how we may operate the display rules and display styles. In our drawing here, our drawing is primarily a structural model. We may want to include piping elements in our model and make them visible, but make them appear like they're in the background and they're not the key component we're focusing the drawing on, but however we want them as context. So what we might do is go to our reference file dialog box and attach a piping model. And that piping model will attach in context of our structural elements. Let's evoke the view and see what we get. Okay, so here's our View. So what we may want to do here as an example, we may want the structural steelwork to appear in our drawing as with black lines. We may want to force the pipework into the background by giving them grey lines. However, keeping in context the steelwork and uh, the piping together. So we can look at display rules for that purpose. So let's have a look quickly at our view attributes. We know in our view attributes we're using the forward drawing and the cut drawing for the cut presentation and the forward presentation. So let's open up our display styles from here. So what we may do is go and create a new display rule. Before we do that, we need a criteria to base the difference on. So let's have a look at, at what that could be. So we know that we have piping referenced in here. So why don't we give the piping model a logical name of piping? So back in our display rules, let's generate a new rule called piping and steel. Because we'll do these together. We'll give it a new criteria. So it always applies, and we can click on that, and we'll hit the pick a property. One of the properties here could be reference. So let's have a look at reference, and click further under references, and then under attachment. And we can see here we have a logical name, which is what we altered. So let's select that one, and we'll say when the reference logical name equals piping, we can do something with that. So let's say OK, and we'll say a new action. So Within here, we have lots of different things we can do. We can hide elements, change the symbology, change the element priority, and we can even set up a whole new display style and use that to alter the settings. Plus, create a hatching of an area. Let's have a look at symbology overrides, and what we might do is change the color to a somewhat gray. But what we might also want to do for future is do the same thing. 
however, use the logical name steel. So what we can do is let's copy and paste and click on this one and change the logical name to steel for a future alteration of the color. And in here, we'll just change this to color zero. So it's a white or, or black on white. And let's shut that down. And let's then change that to piping steel. And we'll do the same for our cut drawing. We'll add that display style there as well. So they're both now overwritten there. Now just to double check that, the grey is a little hard to see if there's an alteration there. Let's go in here and just change it to a different colour just so we may be able to examine that. Let's change it to green and just make sure we can see that change happening. And we can see now that the piping definitely gets the green colour. So let's just change that back to 22 just so we know that's confirmed. And we'll press on into the drawing model. So we'll move on into the drawing model. Okay, so we have some outdated information, so let's just sync that up. Okay, so let's have a look at our display styles here. So let's look at reference presentation. We are using the forward and cut drawing. So let's go to our display style dialog box. We can go to the display rules and we can import from a model. So we can say here, we'll go to our designs folder and we'll import the the rules from that file. So they're now in this file and we can just say, okay, let's set this to piping and steel for the, the cut and the forward drawing. So this time, rather than reloading or sync, let's set our view to dynamic and head up to your references file dialog box. And if you recall, in our display rule, we have the logical name for the gray set to piping. We can go to the steel display rule. Now, what we might do here is rather than using the logical name, we might use the description field for the reference file. And there's a very good reason for that. The reason being is that the link between the model where the save view is created and the drawing model is maintained by the logical name. So if we change that, we disrupt that link. So in this case, we use the references and we'll use the description field. And in the description field, we'll put in steel. So that means if we expand our references hierarchy, under the references for the first file back, the piping has its logical name as piping. We step up one level, what we will do is for the description field here for the steel, let's pop in under the description field steel. And we can see that the steel turns to white and the piping is grayed out. And shut the references file. Uh, dialogue down and we can see that that 
is now taking on the display styles where the steel is set to white or black on white and uh, the piping to grey. So we can then adjust that back to a cache state. So there are our references recolored depending on the criteria. You'll notice that some of the grid lines and text here are also still other colors. So again, the overall display style of this file can be adjusted to deal with that. So another way of dealing with the granularity of adjusting symbolization and re-symbolization for individual objects is using levels and the level override. So if we go up to levels and level manager, what we can do is take a look here. Let's shut down these uh, two boxes. Um, is the granularity of things that are divided by levels. So we can use display styles, but uh, we can also use levels as well. So if we look at the elements that are live in this object, things like automatic annotation, grid bubbles, and so forth, and grid lines, we may choose to use level overrides for that. And you can see up here in the symbology, we have the by level color, but we also have the override color. So here, we may choose to use level overrides to adjust those colors. So we're sorted by used here, showing all the used elements. Um, we can select the levels or the elements of the levels that, that we want to re-symbolize. And we can, for example, change the color. And to ensure that works, we have in our view attributes the level overrides toggle. And we could toggle it to look like so. Okay, so now we have a complete white on black or black on white, depending on the color of the background, with a difference in color for our mechanical work for our drawing and our drawing set up there. Things to consider when dealing with changing the re symbolization and colors and whether things are forward or back, behind text, in front of text, and so forth, is fills. Okay, so we may use a fill to indicate an area or an object or and the like. So Let's have a, a look at what we might do here. So let's set this level here, the active level, to a area. And what we might do is over here, let's look at our place box tool as an example. Now, what we might do is two examples. We might choose to place a, a block here that looks like this. And we may choose to place a block here that has a fill color of 21. And we can place here. Now, first and foremost, if this is an area, let's say it's a gray area of 21, we, we want to see the text and all other line work on top of it. And we also want to gray. But because we're using level overrides, and this is set to default to being white in level overrides, then becomes a, a bit of a mess. So what we can do here, let's say we just wanted to keep some consistency and not dive into the level manager here. Again, we can use display rules to tinker with this. So let's have a look in our view attributes. We have our wireframe display style set for this file. So let's hit the three dots and open the display rules. And let's go into our display rules here and create a new one. We might call it fill. So we'll create a new rule and click on apply always and we can go and select a property. So under element, we might look at shapes because we've placed some shapes. And under general, we can look at fill. And within here, we can say if the fill shape color is equal to 21, then what we may want to do is always make that color 21. So we're keeping some consistency there by marrying up the fill color 21 with the display rules 21. So shut that down. In our wireframe, you can use fill, and there's our fill. So what we may want to do is send this particular object to the back. So we can use the references update sequence for that. So we go to properties, update sequence. We have the plan 01 as the first 
file read, so the file we're currently in, and then the reference file layers on top, and we can say OK. And we can see we, we've now sent that fill to the background, indicating or highlighting that certain area there. And then just to ensure that we're not overriding any elements in this particular file, like this block that we have here, we can go to our change element attributes, turn off for all the other properties, and make sure the property is set to minus 500 so it's well and truly at the back. And you can see our other element that we brought to the front comes through. Okay, so that's some ways of dealing with a mix of drawing procedures and drafting procedures when dealing with elements from a model and drafting elements um, that you want to use live within here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.